the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back. We're still about six months away from the primary, but soon congressional campaigns will start to churn in earnest. Over the next several weeks, it's our goal here at Capitol View to sit down one on one with each candidate, get to know them better and introduce them to you. We start this morning with French Hill, candidate for the second congressional district here in central Arkansas. Mr. Hill, thank you for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure. Good morning. morning. Glad to be with you. Well, as we kind of start this journey, uh, you will be looking to succeed Congressman Tim Griffin, who announced he's not running for a third term a couple months ago. Uh, let's just start off with what what uh, maybe got you into this race to start with. Well, I'd given this uh, a lot of thought over the summer and agreed to run for the state legislature, and I was surprised by Tim's announcement that he would not seek the election, consulted with my business partners and my family, and decided to make a run for the Congress. I've got a passion for public service and a passion to bring common sense and a businessman's perspective to the job. I know when I uh, uh, interviewed you the day you decided to run, uh, I asked you, uh, Washington a lot of times has such a kind of a caustic uh, perception from the public that it's just not a place where a lot of productivity, a lot of things get done. Why do you want to throw yourself into that environment? Yeah, it's a good question and it has uh, uh, set new standards and dysfunction from time to time. But uh, my view is that with my practical experience in business, my problem solving expertise, combined with uh, having worked up there before in both the executive branch and the legislative branch, I sort of have my expectations in line. I think I have a vision on how to bring my experience in business and in government to work in the legislative branch and get things done for the uh, people of the second district. So not feeling too negative about the, the, the vibe in Washington, I mean, fair to say? No, I don't feel uh, negative about the vibe in Washington per se. I mean, it's always a competitive place. It's always a place of uh, where ideas clash, where people's opinions and uh, feelings run high. That's not new, it's uh, we're 200 years old. So I think you just have to be realistic about what are your goals and what do you want to try to do? Um, let's look at, I mean, the campaign. I mean, do you feel the campaign for this race has started or are you waiting to, to ramp up in January? Haven't seen, you know, obviously we're not to the point of any ads or anything like that, but right. where, do you, where do you see this thing going? Well, I see the campaign started. I'm excited that we've got a vigorous uh, Republican primary potential for this race. I think primaries are good. I think they bring a uh, party together and moving forward early in the process and can uh, showcase uh, the Republican point of view out early as opposed to waiting for the summer and the general election time. So uh, I'm not waiting around. What would you say, uh, you know, the key goal should be for the next second district congressperson, uh, you know, from, from this area going to Washington? What are, those, what are those key priorities in your estimation? Well, number one, uh, the uh, primary job of a representative in the House of Representatives is to do work for the constituents, the 700,000 people in this district need representation for their needs, their wants, when they're trying to approach Congress with a problem. So that's always number one. The old constituent service uh, responsibility of a congressman is incredibly important. The second issue, though, uh, from my point of view, is the uh, overreach by the federal government in a number of areas. A lot of news about uh, the overreach through the health care reform, in the budget process, the large deficits we're running the incredible cost of an ever-expanding regulatory system. These are all areas that I have an interest in when I get to Congress. Well, let me ask you about, you know, I guess the, the budget aspect, because I obviously made a, a lot of news this week with the announcement of a, of a deal uh, right. through conference committee. Uh, one of your opponents, Representative Ann Clemmer from Saline County, mm -hmm. uh, basically came out and said that she wasn't in support of, of this particular deal, saying, I understand the need to get the budget passed, but once again, we see Congress kicking the can down the road not addressing out of control spending and the mountain of debt we are under. Um, your thoughts on the, the deal that two congressmen here in Arkansas voted for and, and two didn't, but overwhelmingly passed the House. Yeah, it did. Uh, I've got concerns about the bill. Um, number one, it expands the spending and doesn't live with the sequester cap. 
I would have preferred a, a bill that kept the cap in place but rearranged the spending under it based on the priorities set by both parties in the Congress. And secondly, I, was, I have to say I was shocked uh, that the Congress as a part of a deal would uh, cut veterans' pensions. I think the veterans uh, of our country deserve some certainty in their pensions and so I was, I was very surprised that that was part of the deal. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan. Uh, as it was crafted. So you would have been a no vote? I would have been a no vote. Was it simply just the idea of veterans, uh, you know, pensions no, being in there? Or? No, my big issue on it is the level of spending. I think that I, I believe strongly, and I know that uh, Representative Murray and Representative uh, Ryan worked hard to reach a compromise. And the compromise, uh, the American people like to see progress. They like to see a little certainty out of their legislative branch. So let's not say that that's not an important objective. But I would have preferred the sequester level spending caps be kept in place and that if there had been better priorities on how to manage that sequester, that that would have been the approach of the compromise. So my real concern about it, David, was the increase in, in spending level as a part of the deal. Well, as you mentioned, obviously it's a positive that at least Congress, in some respects, is able to come out of something that looks like a functional No conference. doubt. I mean, one of the things that concerns business people everywhere I go is regulatory uncertainty, governmental funding uncertainty, and mm -hmm. what that means and its impact on the economy, no matter what your business is in, and finally, the monetary policy uncertainty. French Hill, thank you very much for joining us uh, this thank morning. You, thank you very much, sir. Pleasure.